Alrighty y'all, welcome back to the workshop. Today I am going to do an informal walkthrough of the new temp shop. Now most of the time when I make these videos, I take a lot of time to figure out what I'm gonna say. Sometimes I even write it out, and especially over the last six months, I like giving a refined product to you, the viewer. But today I'm just gonna walk through the shop, kind of point out some things that I'm working on, and the direction I'm going with the organization of the tools. Uh, I'm about to start a new knife build, but I figured before I do that, I just kind of want to give you all a little inside scoop. So right here, right when we walk in, this is the gym. Uh, this takes up probably about 300 to 400 square feet. Uh, you can kind of see it behind me here. And I have the gym and the shop separated with a large shelving system. Uh, you can see that shelving system here. I built this way back in the day when I first got my welding machine. All it is is some, uh, some angle iron there and some plywood. Now you may notice when I just walked by that my hydraulic press has been brought inside. It is now inside the shop opposed to wrapped up in a tarp outside. Uh, in order to get it in here, I had to knock off the wheels or at least take the wheels off of the bottom of the press it didn't quite fit in the doors the way it was. So take that in mind. I know a lot of you guys are building a press after watching that last video of the DIY press build. So if you're building a press, just make it about an inch and a half shorter so it can get inside standard doors uh, with wheels on it, hopefully. And even when I was moving the thing, uh, the wheels that I had bought were pretty cheap and I almost died or at least almost damaged the press and probably my driveway. Uh, because one of the wheels broke. So if you're going to buy wheels for these things, uh, get the steel wheels. So here's the forge. This is just a 10 inch old air tank that we cut the end off and converted into a forge by using some kale wool and satinite. There's two inches of kale wool in there and then a blown uh, burner assembly. You know, I've been thinking about maybe going back and redoing this burner assembly a little bit more in a robust manner, but uh, it's working good and it's been working good for a few years now. So we have the anvil here. This is my grandfather's anvil. Uh, it's probably about 110 years old at this point. So it's still going strong. And then we have the North Ridge 2x72 belt grinder with VFD. Nothing to say here other than it's a great grinder and you guys have seen me use this in many of my videos uh, on a pedestal. So that's kind of the front of the shop here. Uh, I don't know if it's going to all stay here, but I think it will. Uh, just because this press is kind of hard to move around and if I'm going to be doing any forging in this temporary shop setup uh, I'd like to be able to push the forge outside. So you know as a side note the shop I'm coming from was 1200 square feet and this shop's about 400 square feet so we got a lot of stuff packed in here. Uh, I just wired in this 220 outlet for the press so that I can start using it. I uh, brought it all the way over here. I'm actually not done with that job but I ran out of outlets or I ran out of breaker spots on my main panel so I put in a sub panel on the left here and I'm not quite done with that project but I'll have a 220 outlet over here and then another 220 outlet over there for the heat treating oven. I'm probably not going to show a video on this sub panel just because I'm not an electrician and uh, I don't want anyone doing anything that's out of code. Uh, so this is our workbench here, uh, it's obviously out of place because of the sub panel work. Uh, this is the little machine shop, 3990 mil. The last video on my channel was actually installing this DRO system. So if you're interested in installing a DRO in your mill, go check that out. Uh, so far, it seems like it's working just fine. I haven't really had a chance to use it. So I'll be using it in my next build extensively. So stay tuned for that. All right, so over here we have our 10 inch Atlas Craftsman lathe restored. Uh, it was originally built in the 30s, but we have it fully restored here. We're going to be using this guy substantially in the next build uh, along with the mill, so I'm happy to have this guy in the shop. So over here we have some dirtier tools, especially this Bauer bandsaw. This thing can turn off some dust and debris for sure, but uh, it's been going really strong. I've had it for about two and a half years now. I got it from Harbor Freight. And every once in a while these things go on sale and I'm pretty tempted just to pick up an extra one in case this one ever breaks, but I know a lot of guys do shop tours and go through some drawers, so we're gonna do that. Uh, you know, I've got some just random tooling in this one for the, uh, for the mill and the lathe. 
we have some you know dial indicators in here and some shim stock and stuff of that nature. I need to really organize this. Uh, this is some handle material. This is the bulk of the handle material. I don't keep a huge inventory. I, I normally just buy what I need for projects uh, that I'm working on. Uh, I normally have the time to do that. And then down here we have some miscellaneous uh, parts from the mill and the lathe. You know, I have some plastic gears printed out that I got online for the lathe. I just haven't had time to install those yet, but those allow me to slow down the uh, power feed on that lathe so that I can make uh, more precise or at least more gentle cuts. And then over here we just have some miscellaneous parts for the grinder, platen, stuff like that. So nothing special there. Straightening jig, you guys love this thing, I love this thing. Keeps the knife straight during the heat treat. So uh, just a standard 150 PSI air compressor. You know, in the new shop build, I will eventually get this thing plumbed in so that I have air around the whole shop. And I was thinking when I build the new shop, I can put a little kind of lean to on the outside that's insulated uh, for sound so that this can be outside the shop because these things can get pretty loud. But it would be really nice to have air at multiple locations in the shop because there's a lot of tools that uh, I could use with, with pneumatic. And then we have, uh, let's see, just a bunch of miscellaneous. I mean, you knife makers know we have a bunch of glue products, a bunch of leather working equipment, fasteners like crazy. I keep my tempering oven on this shelf uh, with the PID controller. So this is where I do all my tempering. And then the rest of it literally is just storage for the most part. Uh, Y'all may remember this big guy from our move. This is the uh, manual stacker. You know, this thing I have a feeling is going to be extremely handy over the next couple of years, just moving stuff around. But I, like I used it recently when I was doing uh, doing this install of the sub panel, I had to move this heavy table back and I just brought it around, picked up the table and moved it back. So this thing's kind of nice to have. Then we keep the surface grinder or I guess the surface grinding attachment on the wall here with the Northridge magnetic chuck. Thing works great. You know, I get a lot of, I guess, uh, old machinist hate on the build video of this thing. It's not meant to be a surface grinder, guys. It's just meant to get things pretty flat, not to the 10,000th of an inch, you know. Uh, it can probably get a six to nine inch piece of bar stock to around a one to five thousandths of an inch tolerance. Uh, which I think is pretty good for, especially for fixed fixed blade knives. And then uh, let's see, this is that beefy dolly that we built to move the press. And then another shelving system. You know, this came out of our garage at the last house, and this will eventually be a normal garage where we'll put you know stuff like Christmas decorations and things of that nature. So that's what's probably going to go on this shelf eventually. But right now it's just packed full of extra stuff. Uh, you only get a kick just about everywhere in the shop has 2x72 belts just hanging all over the place. But alright, we skipped some stuff here. Here's the middle uh, surface plate, granite surface plate. We have the wind water cold sharpener. Uh, I'll normally put this on the shelf, but uh, that's just where it was left after my last knife build. We have some chargers here. I mean, I need to get all this organized, but I just wanted to give you all a quick view. Uh, just some chop saws, cutoff saws down here. We got the uh, a miter saw. Got an old lawnmower that I need to get rid of because uh, this battery lawnmower just won't cut it. This is just the sanding bench from the back. Basically right now it's just a piece of plywood and some 2x4s on top of some sawhorses. But uh, eventually we will make this a dedicated hand sanding bench. And it's nice to have, especially with a pipe vise like that. Uh, you can really get into all the nooks and crannies. So we'll come around here. This is uh, kind of a wood bench that I built real quick just for a shop and it's kind of the main bench at this point. Uh, it has just plywood and, and two by fours, but this is kind of the main workstation. This is that 220 outlet that I just wired in here. This is a 20 amp 220 outlet and this is gonna be run the heat treating oven, which just so happens to be on the floor right here. So this is the heat treating oven, the DIY heat treating oven, capable of about 2000 degrees Fahrenheit that we built a while back. I haven't got much use out of it because of the move at all, but I'm excited to get it up higher on the shelf here and we'll start using it. So um, the plan is to put down, I guess, some plywood here, put the heat treating oven on top of that, and then plug it into the outlet here. And I put a switch on this outlet so I can turn it on and off. 
Everything up here is kind of the basic stuff, you know, welding helmets and uh, hammers and whatnot. We have the uh, respirator here, the supplied air respirator. I'm going to do a dedicated review on that guy for sure because I love it. And it's been doing a, a darn good job working around the shop with particulates in the air and whatnot. It's just, it's just comfortable. A little pricey, uh, very pricey actually, but very comfortable. Okay, and over here we have, uh, you know, the air filtration system from Wynn. I need to get that hung up. Uh, definitely need to get it hung up because of the dust. We've got an old drill press down here. And uh, this is the hand sanding bench from the front. So I have a, a new bench that I put together. Uh, super cheap, super uh, useful. <laughs> you know, for years I've just been sitting on top of a, uh, a box that I made for weightlifting. And this is... This is way better, uh, slightly more comfortable. It's nice being adjustable as well. So, got a new bench, and uh, we're getting set up here. You know, this is this is a work in progress. You know, about to start working on the next knife in here, and uh, it's cozy. It's definitely more cozy than a 1,200 square foot shop. But at the end of the day, sometimes the bigger shops are actually uh, a little bit of a hindrance because you find yourself walking far away to get to the specific tools. So it's kind of nice having everything at your fingertips. I'm not saying I won't build a shop. So if my wife's watching this video, just know that we are building a shop, but uh, it is nice to be efficient. So I will definitely take some of the lessons learned from a small shop like this one and try to apply them into a bigger space to more uh, effectively utilize that space. So maybe have you know center islands and stuff like that. So you don't have to walk far across the shop. I find myself doing that a lot at the last shop. But yeah guys, I mean that's that's kind of the gist of this video. If y'all have any questions, go ahead and hit them up in the comment section. This was just meant to be a super informal, hey this is the state of the shop, this is where we're at, and uh, get ready for the next video because I think it's going to be a good one. But uh, yeah, that's it guys. So if you enjoyed it, go ahead and hit that like button, subscribe to the channel for cool videos coming up, and uh, I'll catch y'all on the flip side.